A very warm welcome to Vision This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Oketumbi. Airplane turbulence may seem like the end of the road, but there is no data of a plane crash caused by turbulence. While turbulence is really no big deal, it can feel like the scariest part of flying. But turbulence is no cause for alarm. That's our interest on the program, especially at this time of the raining season. A background report is next. Passengers making their way into the aircraft. Others seated as the plane and its crew prepare for takeoff. Then traveling at a cruising altitude with everything appearing to be going smoothly. The scenario above is usually the norm, but sometimes things may go wrong due to nature's act like that of the Etihad flights from Abu Dhabi to Indonesia where some 30 passengers were injured and nine others hospitalized in what has been described as severe turbulence. When turbulence happens, it's a spiller of coffee, jostler of luggage, filler of barf bags, and even rattler of nerves, but never a factor of plane crashes. So what exactly is this? Turbulence usually occurs when a mass of air moving at a particular speed meets another mass of air that's moving at a different speed, like an airplane. For most of the time, it happens because of weather conditions such as thunderstorms or jet streams caused by larger aircraft. It's particularly obvious when flying over mountains. According to the US Federal Aviation Administration, Turbulence can also be caused by air movement not normally seen, atmospheric pressure, cold or warm weather fronts, and thunderstorms. Most turbulence accidents happen at 30,000 feet or above, and in-air turbulence is the leading cause of injury to people on flights. In the US, an average of 58 people get injured during turbulent flights. Here in Nigeria, there are no known statistics, but passengers are more prone to danger when not wearing seat belts. Yeah, all the things are that, that there are procedures for them. We have um, if there's a turbul if there's a turbulence like that, the captain would uh, in our own procedure we turn on the fasten seat belt sign, we roll it out twice. It makes a sign. The cabin crew knows what that means. You see the fasten seat belt sign comes on. As a passenger, if you're sitting, the signs is just above your eye level. You could see them. So once you see that seatbelt sign, you need to take your seat and fasten your seatbelt. And then we make an announcement even before we depart from our stations from anywhere. We we'll make the announcement to tell you that it is advisable for you to always keep your, uh, um, your, your seatbelt loosely fastened at all times while seated. And uh, what we do is we make announcement, then you see the crew go around just to check that you've properly done it. Some people would fasten their own seatbelt and they'll forget to fasten their infant seatbelts across the tail. So you need to check all that and ensure that everything is um, well stood, the bags and all that in the cabin. Then you need to check in your galley area as well to ensure that there's no loose items there that could fall out in the course of uh, the turbulence getting beyond um, the lights. Kind of turbulence. Flight crews around the world share a common classification of turbulence, light, moderate and severe. We understand what it's all about. It's not about the aircraft, it's just about the weather. And the pilots are experienced, they are trained, they are well trained, they have the best of trainers. So they're able to handle whatever comes their way. It's normal, the aircraft just goes through that phase and then it's over. On the whole, turbulence is an aggravating nuisance for everyone, including the crew. But then it's also, for lack of a better term, normal. 
from a pilot's perspective, it's ordinarily seen as a convenience issue and not a safety one. When a flight changes altitude in search of smoother conditions, this is, by and large, in the interest of comfort because planes themselves are engineered to take a remarkable amount of punishment and they have to meet stress limits for both positive and negative G-loads. The level of turbulence required to dislodge an engine or bend a wing spar is something even the most frequent flyer or pilot, for that matter, won't experience in a lifetime of traveling.